Savannah, one of the medical students with the team. Is that all right if we do an abdominal exam for you today? Yeah, sure. Wonderful. Before we get started, I'll just check your vital signs. So it looks like all your vital signs are within normal limits. So we'll go ahead and get started, okay? Okay. okay. I'd like to start just by doing a general inspection. So overall, I'm taking a look at your body habitus, whether you're in any cardiorespiratory distress, and for any evidence of jaundice. I'd also start to look at your face for any evidence of parotid enlargement, any evidence of temporal muscle wasting, frontal balding, fetal hepaticus, or scleral icterus. And I'd like to ask you to pull your lower eyelid down so I can take a look for that. So with respect to your hands, we'll start by taking a look for any evidence of teres nails or leukonychia. We'll then flip over and look for any evidence of palmar erythema, any hypothenar or thenar muscle wasting, or any evidence of Dupuytren's contracture. I'll then take a look for any evidence of asterixis, asking you to put your hands up and flex your fingers towards your face. I'll ask you to close your eyes while you do this. If it's okay with you, I'll ask you to lie down, and then I'll put this over your bottom half. We'll lift your shirt so we can look properly at your belly. Is that okay? I do need to be able to see all of your belly. I would then begin with a general inspection of the abdomen, looking for the contour of the abdomen, any evidence of distension or bulging flanks. I would also look for any signs of previous surgery, such as scars. The last thing I would look for would be any evidence of any hernias. I would also inspect for any signs of liver disease, such as ascites, spider angiomas, caput medusa, or gynecomastia. Finally, I will inspect to determine whether there is any evidence of Cullen's or Gray Turner sign. I will then auscultate the abdomen for bowel sounds. Bowel sounds are present in the right upper quadrant. I will then also auscultate for any bruise in the abdomen, particularly in the area of the renal, iliac, aortic, or femoral pulses. I will do this using the bell of my stethoscope. For the purposes of this exam, I will not listen to all the areas. I will then auscultate for venous hum in the umbilical and epigastric region, as well as listen for friction rub in the right upper and left upper quadrants. There's no evidence of any friction rub. The last test I will do while auscultating is that of the liver scratch test. I'll place my diaphragm in my stethoscope in the epigastrium and begin by scratching from the ASIS up towards the right upper quadrant. I will then begin to percuss your abdomen in all nine sections. As I go along, I note the sound, whether it's dull or resonant. I also am making sure to look at the patient's face to make sure I notice if they have any pain. Then I can begin to percuss out the liver, starting at the bottom of the ASIS and moving towards the right upper quadrant, listening for the sound as it goes from resonant to dull. You can also start up in the chest and work your way down towards the liver. The liver span in a normal adult human in the midclavicular line should be between 6 to 12 centimeters. You can also percuss out the spleen, again by starting in the right lower quadrant of the ASIS and tapping in a diagonal towards the left upper quadrant where the spleen is located. Again, if it becomes dull, you note that would be the, spleen, the edge of the spleen. I can then perform Castell's sign by checking and percussing over the last intercostal space on the left side. As I do this, I ask the patient to take a deep breath in and out and listen to the resonance of my percussion. Good. I can then also perform trobes, which is percussing within the borders of the sixth rib the anterior axillary line and the left costal margin. As I do this, I'm moving along, again listening for resonance. 
Furthermore, if I had any concern about ascites, I could perform shifting dullness or the fluid wave test. Now that I've completed percussion, I'll move on to palpation, making sure that I palpate in all nine areas of the abdomen, as well as starting with light palpation and moving to deep. I will also make sure to look at the patient's face to ensure that I catch any signs of pain. Starting with light. Observe for any evidence of tenderness, rigidity, or guarding. And moving again to deep. Again, looking for tenderness. Also being able to assess for any signs of masses. When I'm done this, I can move on to assessing for rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness is demonstrated when a patient has more tenderness when letting go of palpation than on the initial pressing in. When I tell patients that I'm assessing for this, I ask them usually whether it hurts more when I press in as I do this or let go. I will then palpate for your liver's edge, starting in the right lower quadrant at the ASIS, making an L shape with my hand and using the flat of my fingers to feel for the liver's edge as the patient takes deep breaths in and out. Take a deep breath in and out as I slowly move my hand up the abdomen. And out. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. And one more time. And out. When assessing the liver's edge, you're looking for any evidence of nodularity, tenderness, or vascularity, such as pulsatility. I would then move on to palpating the spleen, again beginning in the right lower quadrant, and asking the patient to breathe in and out. I would then offer to perform a DRE. It is very unlikely that you would be required to do this in an OSCE situation. In real life, when performing a DRE, ensure that the patient is appropriately draped and understands and consents to what you are doing. If you suspect appendicitis, there are special tests that you can do to confirm your diagnosis. These include testing McBurney's point, Rossing sign, SOAS sign, or Octrator sign. If you suspect something like cholecystitis, you can also check for Murphy's sign.